Sometimes you will be trucking along and tailoring a shirt and then that was me trying to personify your thread breaking, which is the most annoying thing in the entire world, but there's a couple of different reasons as to why that can happen. I'm SD, I don't really like long intros. Let's do this. Your needle! You probably think that it isn't your needle, and if you think that it isn't your needle, it probably is your needle. You wanna know why that is? Because sewing machine needles do not last forever. Sewing machine needles actually don't even last that long at all. And you gotta, you gotta change it pretty regularly, because what ends up happening is your needle gets worn out, and it causes all these all these like little microscopic wear areas all over the thing and you know what um you know what doesn't like jagged metal um fabric it doesn't like it so it gets caught on it and it kind of rips and tears and well what is your thread made out of it's made out of well not fabric but like whatever whatever word it is i'm looking for it's made out of that so then it shreds on you and it breaks and then it just Oh, it's so annoying. It frustrates you so much, doesn't it? Just the other day, I got this message from this guy in a panic. He's like, SD, please help me out. I don't get it. I've done everything on my machine. All my settings are perfect. I got everything set up right. Every single time I go to tailor anything, I go to use my sewing machine, my thread breaks every single time. And I was like, did you, did you change your needle? He's like, no, I, I haven't done that. So I was like, go, go change your needle. And he did that and he's like, oh, Nice. Thanks, man. Same thing happened to me. I made a tutorial on tailoring joggers and my thread broke three times during that video. Three times! And even I still make the mistake of not changing my needle as often as I should because between myself going on a straight binge tailoring a whole bunch of stuff and then making videos where I'm making a tutorial, well, my needles, they get worn out a lot faster, but I don't really have the foresight to remember or think about it. And I'm like, well, I dropped the ball on that. So then I'm in the middle of a tutorial and my thread bri- <laughs> You thought your phone froze, didn't you? Keep watching. So if you checked all your settings, well, check your needle and maybe change that too. I got a question for you. That uh, that that dial on the front or wherever your stitch tension dial is on your machine, did you did you check it or did you change it or did you move it? Because you might have and you you want to you want to make sure it's set right. And let's back it up a little bit and start here. Your stitch tension on your machine is actually one of the only settings on your entire sewing machine that can break your sewing machine. Now, if you don't get your stitch length right or if you don't use the proper stitch, what's gonna happen? Well, your new stitch and your new seam is just gonna look all janky. That's not a big deal, you're not ruining anything besides, I don't know, your $5 shirt. But your stitch tension, mm, yeah, don't mess around with that. And the reason why it actually causes or can cause your thread to break is what can happen is you have your stitch tension set way too high for whatever it is that you're sewing or that you're tailoring. And your thread is strong, but it's it's not that strong. So what happens is it's got all this extra tension on it and it's being pulled on and the next thing you know, it well, it breaks on you and probably in the middle of a, of a jogger tutorial. Your needle is good and new and changed. Check. Your stitch tension is set correctly. Check. Your thread, it still keeps breaking. Check. What's up with that? Well, here's one for you that actually still, <laughs> it still happens to me. It's not one that you would ever think about until it happens and then you kind of reverse engineer the whole problem and you're like, oh, that's what's going on. It all starts at your spool. Now there's a couple of different problems that can arise from your spool of thread. One, there's a little notch right there on your spool. And if it's facing the wrong direction, and depending on the direction that your spool even faces, whether or not it's vertical or if it's horizontal, if it is horizontal, and that notch is on the wrong side, what happens is your spool just spins in a circle, and then all of a sudden it just gets caught right there on that notch, and then it breaks. So what you wanna do is you wanna flip it the other way around. If your spool runs horizontal, make it so the notch is facing away from everything, away from where the thread comes off. That's literally the biggest ant. I'm gonna take a picture of this. This is the biggest ant I've ever seen. How can the, how can this thing be in a house? But we're not done with the spool just quite yet because here's another thing that can happen with your spool of thread. There's two stickers on the end of it that tell you, you know, the brand and the size and the weight and all that kind of stuff. Well, the problem that can happen with that is the adhesive can, well, it can kind of stick to everything 
and it causes unnecessary resistance as it's spinning around. And as we've learned earlier, sewing machines and thread and needles and all this stuff, they don't like unnecessary resistance because something has to give and it's usually something that you paid for. Who's got two thumbs and now doesn't have to worry about their sewing machine thread breaking? Oh, um, you. That's all I got for you, SD out. Do Deuces. My bad.